Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm in the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, and I'm going to give a teaching learning tutorial on how to use very, very um, easy to find tools to see what is going on. It doesn't matter where, you're, where you live, where your location is. If you have bizarre and crazy weather and you think this is unusual, this is not normal, then I'm going to give you the tools to see where the jet stream is, to see where the cold fronts and warm fronts are, to do actual measurements of how much the temperature is changing, and of course very very rapid temperature changes are happening more and more often. So in Ottawa, I'm going to pick Ottawa since that's where I am. So let me uh, hit the lights to get better contrast. Okay, so the first thing is, if you go, if you open up uh, Google Earth, or this is Google Earth Pro, um, just do a search for your city. So I'm Ottawa, Ontario. I do a search. Okay, so we get the software takes us to Ottawa, Ontario. Okay, now down here you can get the latitude and the longitude. So we're 45 degrees, 25 minutes north, 75 degrees, 41 minutes west. Okay, so from those coordinates, jot down those coordinates and uh, then go down, go to, I'll minimize this, and Google Earth Null School, open it up and uh, Click on Earth, brings up the menu, shows you what we're at. So we're looking at now, we're looking at air at the surface and the temperature in this case. So, so I'm selecting those features. I think wind is the default, but I selected temperature and it shows the temperature right now. And what you, I did is I clicked on the map. Okay, and you can move this guy around just by clicking. And I clicked, you know, in, until I got to about 45 and a half degrees north. 75 and two-thirds degree west. So this is where Ottawa is on the map. Very detailed, uh, very accurate location. And this is what we have right now. This is the, the jet stream is coming down here and all the cold air is spilling out of the Arctic. And uh, we're back to, uh, you know, you can click on this to change the temperature, to change the unit. Okay, minus 13 degrees Celsius right now or uh, eight and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we've had a very unusual day. So let's go back one day here. Okay, uh, I wanna be now. It's down, oh, it's downloading still, okay. So I'm going back a day and uh, just give it a second here. Of course, it always does this when I'm doing the filming. It always works great when I'm doing a little bit of a rehearsal. Okay, um, let's go back. Okay, so this is a, this is a 24 hours ago. Okay, so right here, the temperature is 45.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Do the conversion, that's Kelvin, seven and a half degrees Celsius. Um, and actually, if we go back uh, three hour increments, okay, uh, actually I wanna go forward, sorry, to the, during the day. Okay, so let's have a look at what happened during the day. This is at four in the morning. Okay, so look at the temperature, 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. Click on here, bring it to Fahrenheit. Okay, very, very warm here. Okay, so all the snow and ice was uh, melting just earlier today. And I'm gonna zero in and zoom in on this now. Okay, now what you can see here is, this is the cold, dry air from the Arctic. This is the hot, humid air from, from, from south. And you get this cold front here, and this cold front is advancing. And, and when it crosses over Ottawa, we get this extreme swing in temperatures. Now, how is this relating to the jet stream? 
Okay, let's go back to here and we'll just bring up the jet stream at 250 millibar. I want to look at the wind and here's what you see here. Okay, so there's Ottawa. You can see the jet stream. So the cold air is coming down, the warm air is going up. And in fact, if we expand this out, what you can see is um, there's warm air being brought right up into the high Arctic up here, for example. Um, so we can go back to temperature um, and go back to the surface temperature. And what you can see is very, very warm air above, zero, above the freezing point is going right up into the Arctic. Okay, and when this crosses Ottawa, we're in a deep freeze, the Arctic is much warmer. Okay, so let's go back to see, let's zoom in again here. Okay, so this is where the, the cold front is, it's advancing this way, and this is where the jet streams are. Okay, so the jet streams are very wide here, and the cold front is sitting right over, right under here. Okay, so this is what I mean when I say the jet streams act as a wall between the very cold, dry air and the very warm air. Okay, so if we go back to temperature here at the surface, let's now advance um, in three hour increments. And if uh, my, let's, whoops, I, I just moved Ottawa. 45, that's close enough. Okay, so three hour increments here and look at that. Okay, this is where, so this is Ottawa right here, just, o, just a little distance over this way, much above zero, 44.4 Fahrenheit, just a little bit this way, much below zero. Very, very large temperature gradient. Okay, um, let's proceed here, and what you can see is as the cold front is moving further and further down, Okay, each region along this line experiences those very, very rapid temperature changes. Now, when the temperature changes are extremely large, uh, we call it basically a, a flash freeze. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, cold front here. Okay, so this is a, this is a typical uh, cold front. Okay, this type of thing happens. I'll just click on this. Okay, so the cold air is dense and a lot heavier. The warm air is much, much lighter and cold air doesn't carry that much moisture. As the air gets warmer and warmer, it can hold more and more water vapor. In fact, for every degree increase in temperature by this equation called the clapeus clauseron equation, uh, one degree increase in one degree Celsius increase in temperature, 7% more water vapor in the air. So the cold air is dense and it pushes up the warm air. The warm air gets pushed up, it cools down because it's reaching higher altitude and you get the clouds forming and you get heavy precipitation at, at the front here. Okay, so on the weather map, it's indicated as these blue triangles, blue being cold, warm fronts are yellow, are, are red sort of red circles. Okay, uh, let's look at some of the characteristics of the cold front. So here we are here. Okay, um, and uh, what you can see is, uh, this is where the precipitation is here. These are different types of clouds. So these are cumulus clouds. This is stratus clouds, stratocumulus. Alto is mid-level clouds, alto cumulus, alto stratus, and then um, cirrus um, and uh, Okay, so this is the temperature here, so, so it's, it's showing the clouds. This is a, the cold front because it's advancing. If you have the case of a, of a warm front, okay, which is not the case here, the warm air will start overriding the cold air. So you get a much shallower slope here. This is much steeper. This front will move much faster than this front because the air is heavy and dense and it just plows through the, the uh, warm, lighter air. Okay, um, so let's have a look at some, some of the details in Ottawa today. Um, this is a map here. So noon temperature, 11.2 degrees Celsius. Um, current temperature, and this was 
um, about 8.30 tonight, um, it was minus 10.9 Celsius. So that's a huge swing, 22.2 Celsius in a nine hour period. And uh, so that's uh, two and a half degrees Celsius per hour. If you do the conversion to Fahrenheit, that's about four and a half degree Fahrenheit change per hour. Um, so, but what's even more interesting here is that between, this is hourly data for Ottawa, okay, so, but you can, can, you can get this for any city, you know, anywhere you are. You know, at noon, it was 11 Celsius. It, the temperature dropped seven degrees in one hour. This is a very, very rapid drop, okay? Um, then to two degrees here, then to zero. So this is the transition here, how quickly this happened. So we had a basically, um, you know, two degrees down to minus three. So we had a swing of five degrees Celsius um that's nine degree fahrenheit swing through zero and that's the key thing of course you know all of these freezing thawing freezing thawing freezing thawing you know cycles uh wreak havoc on infrastructure on roads you get cracks forming in the roads you get water seeping in and you get a flash freeze and the ice expands when it freezes and it pulls, it pushes the road apart. It lifts some of the pavement, cars go over it. That thin layer of pavement that's bulging out gets, gets uh, broken by cars and you end up with a pothole. Um, you get uh, other interesting things going on like these cryosisms or frost quakes, okay? After you get thawing of ice or snow or a heavy rain, storm water seeps into the soil and bedrock becoming trapped as shown here when temperatures fall rapidly the moisture trapped in the soil and bedrock begins to freeze it expands as the moisture freezes it expands it puts pressure on the surrounding soil and bedrock pushing them apart eventually the stress from the expanding ice is too much and the soil and bedrock will crack, creating a loud noise and occasionally shaking the ground, causing a, causing a big loud noise or bang in the night, for example, with no apparent cause. Night, spell much. Uh, night because when is the, what part of the day does the temperature normally reach its minimum value? Okay, sun goes down, gets colder and colder and colder. It's just before the sun rises. So it's just at dawn. That's normally when the temperature is the lowest. What we're seeing though, when, these, um, when the jet streams are in motion and there's a large temperature gradient across the jet stream, we don't, sometimes the temperature is still, like in Ottawa, you know, um, for example, you know, it might be one or two degrees, for example, um, you know, when the sun goes down and then by midnight, it's like seven or eight or nine degrees or 10 degrees because the, the, uh, you know, the, the jet stream has moved and the warm, so the warm air has come in, right? So it kind of, you know, things are, things are very chaotic in, in, in the weather systems now. Um, this is just an article, you know, from major melt to flash freeze. Ottawa has a Freaky Friday, okay? So Freaky Friday in Ottawa. Temperature dropped from 12 Celsius to minus 15 overnight. Okay, this is a canal that we have, one of the one of the world's uh, the Rideau Canal Skateway. One of the and now this thing. Now they didn't get a load of this. Okay, they didn't open it until um, about a week ago. They opened it on a fr I think on a Friday. It was it, it closed on Tuesday or something. Okay. <laughs> because of the warming. Now, why didn't they open it in mid-December? It was super cold. You know, they said, oh, because we had a very warm fall, you know, it took much longer for the water to freeze. But I mean, we had multiple days that were minus 20. So I just didn't, you know, it's a, sort of a comical explanation. They didn't open it because they didn't want to pay people money to do overtime and get the thing open over the Christmas holidays. Um, so frostbite advisory, lots of chunks of ice falling off roofs. There's a canal again. Somebody had an umbrella in the morning, just ditched it because it got super cold at night. 
Um, and uh, skating rinks, and here we go. Now the you know by eight thirty, wind chill minus twenty. So this so so.